Then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Shepra and Pua. When you help the Hebrew woman as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders, and they allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this? he demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? The Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, the midwives replied. They are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly we cannot get there in time. So God was good to the midwives, and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. So we see the King Pharaoh order these midwives to kill every newborn baby boy because he feared that the Israelites were being numerous in that time. Um, the scripture says, but they feared God, so they didn't do it. You can imagine how afraid they were whenever they were brought in for questioning by him, but they were very wise in their response. Um, scripture says God was kind to them and because they feared him, he gave them families of their own. Um, in this video, I want to talk about how God blesses faithfulness and, you know, being faithful is to be loyal, to remain steadfast, even when times get hard. Okay. Chicken nuggets. Wow. Um, I have an awesome roommate. Anyway, um, that's what I was going to talk about in this whole YouTube video chat is how God blesses faithfulness. So I know He has blessed me by being by by me fearing Him and being faithful to Him since I've been walking with Him uh, for quite some time now. I'm stuck. Uh, here. You got it, bro. Do you? you got it. You got it, dude. You got it. You got it, bro. French wrap supreme, a healthy version. We we eat that we eat that protein tonight. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, we're gonna eat good tonight, right, Mr. Yes, Ashley? Yes, sir. Here at my new security job. I've only been here like once. Yeah, it's a break room. You can take a picture. You know, right? Oh, you got an iPhone. No, I, I can't do that on mine. You do. But don't zip up all the way, you feel me? Hey, zip it up to like right here. Like right here. So, not that I was drifting from God, but you do not want to be lukewarm. Uh, Psalms 139, 23 to 24. Search me, O God and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the paths of everlasting life. Because of the people around me were not believers, it was difficult at times to really stay focused on Jesus. I know I started to get too comfortable. When you pray and ask God to help you grow, He will do it. Around March 7th, 2023, that's when this trial had started. So around this time, the pot has started to boil. There was a shift. The house that I moved into, they weren't believers. But I was working, I was grateful. God knew it was time for a change. I remember this season was just hard. And the enemy was at my mind. I was walking and this tall like demon started to follow me and it looked skinny. So I started running for my car. I got in my car, locked the door and it was just banging with its elbow trying to break in my car. And then, so I escaped the car, got out, went on top of my car and it scratched me on my side. And then I woke up. And I, like, I felt that same scratch and I looked and there was nothing there. 
I feel like the enemy was trying to provoke fear in me. And so I said, nope, I prayed the blood of Jesus over me and I went right back to sleep. As I was driving home, my car had started to like overheat. And so when I took it into the shop, it was not fixable unless I buy these parts. But even if I were to buy these parts, it's not guaranteed to work. I told myself it's going to work out. You got me, God. I started to doubt a bit because I prayed and I thought that it was going to be instant, like next week. I was, then I started to think like, how was I going to get to work? How was I going to get to school? I got some help from close people around me. However, one time one was like, what's wrong with you? You just heard news about your car. You just heard that it's not going to work out. I would not be calm if I were you. I would be so upset. I had just responded with, God will work it out. And in my mind, I told myself, it's not their fault. They don't know my God like I do. Ephesians 6, 12. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil, things unseen in the heavenly realms that we need to put on the full armor of God. And so more time had passed and it felt like nothing was moving. A week passed, nothing. Three weeks passed and it was like a routine of getting rides, using my money to get like Uber and stuff. And from the people in my house, I started to feel like a burden. They started to like turn their shoulder to me a bit. A bit. And so here's a journal entry uh, from March 2023. Feeling Tuesday, March 14, 2023. Defeated, empty, anxious, a big ball about to burst with tears. I already owe $400 with towing alone, and my car isn't guaranteed to work, even if they fix the water pump and the coolant situation, because I could have damaged it by driving while hot. I came to the bathroom trying to hold it all together. I just wanted to lay on the floor until eventually I have to get up. I will believe for the more God has for me. He knows. He is watching me right now. I will have faith that he will help me take care of it. God, you are still good. You remain the same. You will come through for me. Not all of the time period was bad. Um, I was still having faith that he would come through, but I didn't want to just sit there. I applied for a job across the street where I work. So here's another journal entry. Tuesday, March 21. I did it, I did it. I got another job. I applied for Planet Fitness, and now I will also undergo vigorous training, and they will work overnight. I can do it. I have no car and I need the money. I probably won't sleep, but it's okay. I have my Jesus. I did pray about it. I actually wanted to get back on my medication to help me focus more. And I'm hoping that I make a good decision on that. I'm very happy to get thrilled. I'm not sure I mentioned, the, but I got news on my book, The Shiny Penny. I got the cover art, the picture of me when I was a toddler and my t-shirt reads, when God made me, he was just showing off. That's true. He blessed me greatly. The enemy tried his hardest to mold me onto his, to this world, crumble or worship him but nope i refused he did these things i won't give up i won't succumb to the desires of this world i chose jesus i choose jesus life freedom peace joy i will prosper i will succeed because god is for me and not against me he is greater than my circumstance the same god who created the whole earth and the people almost livestock in seven days can and will continue to change my life i love you lord your circumstance doesn't determine your joy philippians 4 12. i remember worship was so heavy in my mental I was praying and journaling, of course, and I would sing that song, Jaira. Besides all of that going on, I still felt anxious. It, um, it felt like I, couldn't, I didn't feel him, and I, was, I would be anxious about it. But eventually, I just went, would go to sleep and start over the next day. I started to get wound up a bit more. I mean, I did not give in and quit. I wasn't sleeping as much and because I was working overnight at the gym my second job, I had eventually developed like sores on both of my feet that it would it would hurt to walk. I thought that like, like it would heal and go away, but it didn't. I didn't show it, but I just reached a breaking point. At work, when I was working at the gym overnight, I just went to the restroom and I cried out all I had and I practically, I yelled at God, I was mad. Lord, how do you expect me to work when I can't even walk? What do you want me to do? And I kind of just like broke down more and I was curled up in a ball on the floor. I was crying a lot and that's when I heard, get up and keep going when it said that my whole body shook i felt goosebumps all over my body when i heard that that's kind of when you know it's from god and so i got up i washed my face and in that moment before i got up in that moment it felt like i was being hugged by jesus i can't explain it but i got up and remembered all that he had done in my life why would he fail me now and i just told him like i'm sorry god i know you're not done it's just really hard so please heal my feet and give me strength to finish this job tonight. I'm a strong believer that um, God really does meet us in our brokenness. The Bible says he is close to the brokenhearted. He always reaches out and he, hum he humbles us to know that we can't do this alone. It says those who want to follow me must deny themselves, pick up the cross and follow me. 
So after confirming I was able to move in with one of my family members, I had called the college about transfer and then they confirmed it. And then I don't know where my friend Josh reached out to me. And so I kind of like told him everything, like how it was, like everything that was going on. He told me about the car that he didn't use. He had like a car that was just sitting there in the garage. Um, I remember telling my grandpa that I was going to move. He was like, you know what? He's like, tell him to bring the car here. And my friend Josh bought it that next day and he talked to him. We checked it out. It was legit. It was awesome. It was, he sold it to me for $3,000, that car. If I gave him 1,300 or 500, he would give it to me that day. And so my grandpa said, follow me to the bank. We went to the bank. My grandpa took out 1,500, gave it to him. I got the car and the title that day. And I drove home and I was just, I was just so hyped. I couldn't believe it. Like my grandpa won, like, wow. So after my grandpa went to the bank, I got the car that day. I was up with there jamming, like, you know, praising God, the bot went home. Long story short, my friend Josh only asked, the only thing he asked about is if I prayed for his kids. He said, I can pay him back whenever I needed to. It's no big deal. I went away to pray to God and who searches hearts and minds and rewards each person according to what their deeds deserve. Jeremiah 17. So all of this to say, God blesses faithfulness. When things got hard, I could have ran away. I could have given up, but no. Remembering again what scripture says. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13 Also, remembering how he has told us, I have plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Yeah, that's who God is. He said, for he's not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he not speak and not, does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? This is Numbers 23, 19. So friend, whoever is watching, I encourage you to know that God has already spoken over your life. I encourage you to come to Jesus. Let him change the way you think. Let him change the way you live. And let him shake you up just to make you stronger. Following Jesus was the best decision I ever made. Yes, it is costly, but it's worth it. It's very worth it. This trial, it had strengthened me. He again helped me realize that this is not our home. Like the like those midwives who feared God. It can be challenging at times because we will be tested for enduring for the cross. But again, it's well worth it. It says, he'll wipe every tear from our face when he comes back. And he's coming. The Bible is full of broken people whom God used. All of these stories of how God always came through. And after this trial, it was on to the next one. <laughs> it really was. I love that. In the end of the day, God is the one who gets all the praise. Not me, not these people over here on the side, not these other people, God does, God does, God wins. And so I'll close with 2 Corinthians and says, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no mind has conceived, the things the Lord has planned for those who love him. So to say more, believe you are capable of incredible things and that God has a plan for you and believe it. Encourage yourself, um, but thank you. So here, my brother Caleb, uh, with the oh god, with the Caleb with the C, uh, we had that monster right there, but he's the one that's been helping me with some content. I just want to say this brother's cool. His energy is great. He's really great. Um, yeah, God is good. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, God is good. I have to agree with you. Bro. I don't really have anything to say, bro. But uh, okay. All right. Awesome. But update. Working at Planet Fitness, as you can see. My car had broke down two months ago. Now that I have a car, don't need this job. Long story short, it's my last day and there's just like this wall. But I was like looking, you know, and I saw this and then bam, for being amazing. Call many names. Well, I've been called many names, but amazing is a new one. So, wow. What size? I think I saw a 14. Remember, you I showed you. <laughs> oh, I think I put it somewhere else. Got hot there for a second. What's that? Oh. I did. I sent it to her. You should go try it on. Check the zipper works. Steven, think of the song that you like.
I can't rap. <laughs> No. Go, let's go. Okay, I don't even know. The way you just threw it. I'm not saying my pleasure. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Because I'm going to join competition as well. And I'm going to be like, wah! And I'm like, wah! And I'm like, wah! 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 Stop it out.